Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's good to be back. Um, it, it, it really has felt like a long time since I've been up here, and um, it's just very good to be back up preaching and, um, and uh, doing God's, God's will. I'd like to take a moment to welcome our guests, and we appreciate you coming, and we're glad that you're here. Now, before I began writing this sermon, I had actually never read anything in the book of Jude. But it caught my attention because of actually how short it is. You may have noticed in today's scripture reading, I didn't say um, any chapters. I just said that it comes from verses 17 through 23. Because in the book of Jude, it, it's so short that there's actually no chapters in it. It's just, just verses. It's only, in my Bible, about two pages long. But in most Bibles, it's probably only one page because I've got, this is a study Bible, so it's got um, a lot of different things on here. But the book of Jude is, is quite interesting because it's very hard-hitting and, and straight to the point. You see, Jude's original, um, original intention by writing this was just to... Um, just to make it a more general doctrinal lesson. But he was compelled by God to write this book in, in the way that it's been written in order to warn us about the problem of false teachers in the church. Jude wants to make sure that his readers understand the destructive implications of their teaching. He urges us to resist these false teachers and also to defend our faith and the body of the truth received from the apostles that, that, that we have all come to know and believe. And of course, he finishes by reminding us of the hope that we have in knowing Christ. He tells us that we have hope that we will have eternal life. And even though there's problems in, in the world and, our, and in our lives and even in the church, we will be given eternal life because Christ will come again. And because of our faith, we will achieve eternal life. And so Jude tells us about the dangers that false teachers impose, because they, are, they can be very dangerous. False teachers will lead us astray from the word of God, and they'll have us believing things that, that God never says. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith, and follow deceiving spirits, spirits and things taught by demons. Now it takes a lot of faith to follow the word of God. It takes a lot of, a lot of strength and even courage to follow God's word. Because as we know, being a Christian is a challenge. It's not an easy thing. We don't follow Christ because it's an easy life. It's, it's quite difficult at times. We'll face judgment from others and we'll, we'll face times of hardship because of our faith. But even though we face hardship and judgment from others, it's our faith that saves us from the eternal judgment. The judgment that comes from people will is only very temporary. But God's judgment is eternal. But when we have Christ and we're um, cleansed of our sins because of his blood, God doesn't judge us for our sins. He sees us as perfectly righteous people, just as Christ was. And so when false teachers come into the church, or even it doesn't have to be in church, it could just be anywhere, really. If they begin um, teaching their lies, then it can be dangerous if we decide to follow those lies. Because false teachers can be quite convincing. We know that they're dangerous because of, of how easily, well, not easily, but how Effectively, they're able to, to slip in, as, as Jude says, and, and spread their lies so that we begin believing those and not the word of God. And so, as, as First Timothy said, we begin to abandon our faith when we, when we um, choose to follow the false teachings that uh, false teachers give us. Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 through 9 say, But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be, un be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel 
other than what you accepted. Let them be under God's curse. The only truth and the only gospel that we ever need to worry about following is the one that we see in the Bible. The Bible is the only truth. Nothing can be removed from it and nothing can be added to it. Because if that happens, then it's no longer God's true word. And false teachings have always been um, have always been a thing throughout history. There's never been a time when when false teaching wasn't present. Even in the very beginning, in the uh, in the in the in the garden, the devil came and tricked Adam by, and tri- well, tricked Eve um, by giving her false teachings about God. And because of that, she ate the apple, and so did Adam. And so false teachings have always been around. They, they first started with the devil. And since then, false teachings have, have grown, and there have been more false teachers coming around. Now, the one example that I can think of in our church today, as we, as we have already kind of mentioned in the beginning, is the problem that we have with the Methodist Church, the, the United Methodist Church. As we know, the, um, the issue of homosexuality has been a great debate in not just the United Methodist Church, but in all of the churches. And the Bible makes it clear that homosexuality is wrong, is a sin. That's what um, all of us in here believe, and so that's why we're disaffiliated. And because of the teaching that homosexuality isn't a sin, we've seen the church become completely divided. So many churches have have split from the United Methodist Church, and I think this happened with the Presbyterian Church as well. And because of this, there's been so much division and so much conflict within the church. I hate to say it, but the United Methodist Church has really become the divided Methodist Church. And so that's one clear example of the danger of false teachings. And Jude says that we have to stand up for what we believe, stand up for the true gospel, and defend the faith. And so that's what we kind of did by, by leaving the Methodist Church. We, we stood up for what we believed in, and we joined uh, the Global Methodist Church, which aligns with what we believe. Now, it's important to remember that while Jude tells us to resist the, um, the false teachings that were given, he also tells us that we need to be merciful to those who, who doubt and to those who fall victim to false teaching. He never tells us that we should that we should fight them, fight these these people that, that spread false teachings, but rather he says that we should pray for them. Because as God's people, it's our job to love everybody. We have to love even our enemies. And so we have to make sure that we pray for those who who may be confused and who may be be uh, being misled by false teachings. Christ loves loves everyone. He loves came to die for us. He never he never waged war against against sinners. He never he never fought them in any kind of way. But rather he loved them and he even died for them. And so when we love our um our enemies, when we love the people who who um who are misleading others, we pray for them and we we ask that God may be merciful to them. And through the power of prayer as we know, anything is possible. Jesus says that, that all things are possible through him. And so when we pray for them, we ask God that you help them to guide them into the right direction. And, and hopefully he will. Only the Holy Spirit can truly con- convict us to follow God's word and to follow the truth. And so Jude emphasizes the importance of standing up against false teachings so that, so that they don't spread um, any further. If we do nothing when um, a false teacher is misleading people, then they'll continue to mislead people, and more and more people will abandon the faith and follow and follow another. And false teachers can be sometimes hard to to um, to find because. Uh, Jude says in the beginning that they 
have a way of secretly slipping in among us, and they're able to to spread their lies because they often mix the truth in with their lies. Jude gives us, us seven ways to spot the false teacher, and I'll go through each of them. I'm going to start in verse 4. Jude says that they have secretly slipped in among us, and they do this by, as I just mentioned, mixing the truth in with false truth. And so, well, before I go any further, it's important to remember that we have to look for God, look to God for discernment. Without discernment and without wisdom, we'll never be able to spot a false teaching. And so when we ask God for discernment, when we ask him to help us with, with our wisdom and, and uh, discerning truth from lies, he helps us to do this and he helps us to recognize the signs that um, false teachers may, may have. The second thing that Jude says is that they're ungodly people. If somebody continues to live in sin um, and just blatantly ignores the word of God and the commandments that he's given us, then that is one, one sign that they're a false teacher. The third sign that he gives us is that they pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. You see, people can sometimes be confused and think that because Christ died for us, we have the freedom to sin. Some people may think that because we're um, forgiven by, by Christ because of his death, we're able to sin all we want without having to face consequences for it. But of course, as we know, this isn't the case. False teachers will often, will often pervert the, the grace of God so that they're able to excuse themselves from, from any kind of consequence of, of following sin. You see, when we live a sinful life on purpose and we choose to ignore the commandments that God has given us, we've not really accepted Christ as our Savior. Because when we truly accept him as our Savior and we choose to, to, to accept his, his love and grace, we choose to follow his way of life, not because it's easy for us, but because we know that it's what God wants us to do. Jesus promises us that when we follow his, his will, we'll be, we'll be on the, the narrow path. And as we follow the narrow path, it will eventually lead us to eternal life. See, there's two paths that Christ tells us about. There's the wide path and there's the narrow path. And the wide path is easy to stay on because there's nothing we really need to follow. We follow our, our own rules and we live our lives however we want to. But when we follow the narrow path, we follow God's will and we follow the way that He the way of life that He wants us to live. And while that may be challenging, it will lead us to eternal life and it will all be worth it in the end. Even if it seems difficult and even if it seems like it's it's not worth it. We have, the, we have hope and faith through, through Christ that we will be rewarded in, in um, the life to come. The fourth way that uh, we can spot a false teacher is when they deny Jesus as our, as our Lord and, and as our Savior. See, false teachers don't want us to, to follow Christ. Because they know that when we follow Christ, we're given wisdom and we're given discernment. And they'll know that eventually we'll be able to spot their lies. They want us to follow them and they want us to follow their way. I'm sure you all have heard of the Antichrist. Um, we don't know who he is yet. We don't know when he's coming, but we do know that he is coming, as Revelation has told us. And that's what the Antichrist is going to do, all of these things. He'll secretly slip in among us. We don't know when he's coming. We we don't know who he is. And so he's going to be difficult to recognize at first. And he's going to live an ungodly life. The Antichrist will not follow the teachings of the Bible. He will live his own, his own way and in his own life. The Antichrist will also pervert the grace of God. He will not acknowledge God's salvation. And instead, he'll, he'll spread lies so that we follow him and um, blindly follow him so that we don't achieve eternal life. 
And of course, another thing he'll do is deny Jesus Christ as our Lord. He doesn't want us to follow Jesus because he wants us to follow him. And if we choose to follow the Antichrist, then of course that will lead us to destruction. And so when the Antichrist does eventually come, whether that be in our lifetime, we don't know. But if it is, then it's important that we recognize this, that we recognize the false teachings that he's spreading, so that we're able to stand up for our faith and not abandon the faith and continue to follow God so that we may enter into eternal life. Another way that, that Jude says we can spot um, false teachers is if they claim to have dreams and visions from God. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody says God gave him a dream, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a false teacher. I, I, I had a dream one time. Um, I was in my house, and um, you know how dreams are always kind of weird. Nothing looks you know, like it actually does. For some reason, I, I was in my parents' bathroom. I have no idea why. I'm hardly ever in there. But for whatever reason, I was in there, and um, I, I didn't, I couldn't see it, but I, I felt this, uh, this dark kind of beast-like presence, and I knew that it, it must be some kind of, of demon or something. And I, I could hear a, I remember it was a long time ago, but I remember I could hear a low kind of growling, and um, I remember I, I, I stood my ground and I yelled and I said, "I believe in God, not you," and then I woke up and it was gone. So maybe that was just, just a regular dream. It could have just been a normal dream. Or it could have been a sign from God. It, it could be. And so even though I just told you about that dream, I'm not a false teacher. Um, I'll always tell the truth. I'll always say what the Bible says. And so even if somebody tells you about a dream they have, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a false teacher, as I just mentioned. But what Jude is saying here, really, is that if somebody relies solely upon their dream to, to teach you something, a false teacher will claim to have visions from God, and they'll claim to have dreams to make themselves seem as though they have more credibility. And so if they, if they raise their dreams uh, to the, or visions to the, to the standard of, of the Bible, then that's one way to know that they may be a false teacher. If they, only, if they only preach about their dreams and they don't preach about what God says in the Bible and in Scripture, then that may be a false teacher. The sixth way to spot a false teacher is if they reject authority. Jude says that they reject authority and heap abuse on celestial beings. And so what he means by that is if they reject, um, you know, somebody in the church that's, that's higher above them and they only want to do their own thing and, and um, spread their own, own belief, then they walk in pride. If they don't want to follow the rules, if they don't want to, to conform to the church, then they're walking in their own pride and they're walking in their own self-righteousness. And then the last way that he mentioned is that if they... He says, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. If somebody goes around preaching the word of God just to, to, just to make money, just to make profit, then that's a sign that they're clearly not trustworthy. We don't preach because, because we do it for the money. We don't, we don't spread God's love because we want to, to earn money and, and, and have a nice living and make a good living. But we do it because it's God's will for us to do it. And we do it because we want to serve God and not ourselves. So when somebody comes along and they, they only preach if, if they get paid to do it or they earn some kind of profit in some way, then that's a good sign that they're someone that cannot be trusted and maybe a false teacher. So why am I telling you all this? Why does Jude tell us all this? Well, the reason is, as we've already mentioned, false teachers can be incredibly destructive, more destructive than, than we can really comprehend. Because if they lead others astray, if they, if they cause others to follow their way and not God's way, then it will lead them on the, to the wide path. And Jesus says that the, that the wide path leads us to destruction. 
And false teachings are, are very prevalent today, not just in, in churches, but everywhere in the world. And so I think it's important that all of us in here recognize the signs that, um, that I've talked about and that we recognize the, the problems that false teachings can cause so that we know that we have to stand up for God's word and we're able to because we've been given the, the discernment by God to recognize these warnings. But now we're here at the part of the sermon where I talk about the good news. Jesus tells us that the truth will set us free. When we follow the, the, the lies that false teachers um, teach, we become slaves of sin. Um, Jesus says in John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. When we follow God's truth, when we, when we follow the gospel and Jesus' teachings, we're set free from sin. Because when we live a life of sin, when we continuously sin, it becomes harder and harder to break free from that sin and follow um, God's teaching. Jesus warns us that when we that when we live on our own sin, we follow the wide path, and that path leads us to destruction. And so, what does it mean by by destruction? Well, it can mean a few things. For one thing, sin can cause um, destruction in our in our earthly lives. God doesn't tell us not to do things just because He feels like it, just because He doesn't like it. He tells us to do things, tells us to not do things because he knows the consequences that it has. Sin's consequence doesn't just affect our eternal life, but it affects our life here on earth. And so when we become slaves of sin, we end up living a life that's full of, of sin's consequences. And we can never really bear fruit like Jesus tells us to. But when we follow God, we're able to break free from that sin because we know we know the truth and the truth sets us free. We no longer have to be slaves to sin and we can live our lives in a fruitful way like God has commanded us to. John chapter 8 verse 34 says, Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus is the Son. In the Holy Trinity, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the Son. And Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so when we follow the Son, when we follow Jesus, he sets us free. We have no permanent place in a life of sin. Sin will never lead us to, to a, a permanent, eternal life. It will only lead us to destruction, and it will only lead us to um, an eternal life separated from God, which is what hell is. When we say hell, we don't necessarily mean a, a burning fire or a lake of fire. What hell really means is being eternally separated from God. And because we follow sin, we have no permanent place with God. God will try his best to, to convict us in our lives and and cause us to turn to him. But once we die, it's too late. We, uh, we have, um, we have our, our earthly lives to follow him and to experience his blessings. And we're given the chance to, to accept him as our savior. And so that's why it's important to choose to follow God now and not to put it off until later on. Because we never know when our lives may end. But when we follow the Son, when we follow Jesus, he says that the Son belongs to it forever. We are sons of God, and when we follow God, we, we are recognized as his children. And when we follow God, we have a place with him forever. He will give us an eternal life in heaven with him. And so we have to remember that Jesus is the truth. John 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
There's no other way we can enter eternal life without, um, without following Christ. When we follow Christ, we accept his free gift of salvation, and we're able to, to live a life free from sin and live in truth. And living in truth is important to do, and it's not only important, but it's difficult. Because we have to have wisdom to do it, we have to have the strength to do it, and we have to recognize the signs of a false teaching, the signs of a lie, so that we're, so that we're able to follow the truth. We always have to look to God for discernment. Discernment isn't something that we can just get by ourselves. We have to have God's help to do it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10 says, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more, with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. And finally, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. When we live in truth, we follow the commandment that God has given us. We can't live in truth if we choose to follow something else. The only truth that there is comes from Christ. And all of the truth that we need is found in the Bible. And God has trusted us with his gospel. And as Christians, it's our job to defend that faith and to also spread it. Even though many lies are being spread every day, we as Christians have the job to spread the true gospel. And so when we, when we tell others about the word of God, when we, when we preach the word of God, whether that be on the street, I've, I've seen a few street preachers around, or whether it be in church, we're spreading the truth and we're spreading God's love so that we're able to, to resist the temptations of the devil and resist his lies that he spreads. And in, and in order to do this, we have to seek wisdom and discernment. We won't be able to follow God's truth without having the discernment to recognize it. God will help us if we, if we ask him. Without God, we can do nothing. Nothing is possible without God. But when God allows us to, or when God helps us to fight temptations and follow his truth, we will be able to do it because through Christ, all things are possible. And we should thank God for for um, his trust in us. He has trusted us with his gospel. There's only one true gospel, and it's right here. And so when we spread it and defend it, we are honoring God, and we're also building up for ourselves an eternal reward in heaven. And so when we follow the truth, when we ignore the lies that are spread, we have wisdom and we have discernment. And most importantly, we break, we, we break free from the slavery of sin, and we live in truth, and the truth will set us free. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.